And on the Goodyear Hotline, a man who will never know the joy of rooting for a team that's won a championship, as Milwaukee <laughs> fans know now. Not even if the best, I don't know, 10 teams were all destroyed by injury. <sighs> CP the franchise, NBA analyst, and Knicks fan TV. Um, listen, we're obviously we're talking championships, so we're not talking about the Knicks CP. Although, this finals closeout performance by Giannis CP is up there with Magic Johnson in 1980 and Clyde Frazier in 1970 among the top, let's say, five or six of all time. My vote will go to Clyde or Magic. But, okay, so you did get a Knicks mention in there. Um, your impressions of Giannis and the Bucks after last night. I thought, in, to me, based on what I've seen, it's the greatest finals performance ever. I mean, when you factor in 50 points, 14 rebounds, five block shots, and not only that, 17 of 19 from the free throw line. Yeah. The Greek freak came in determined. He was hell-bent on delivering the first championship in, in Milwaukee in the last 50 years, and he got the job done. Phoenix had no answers for him. They went with Aiton in the beginning. Aiton was completely shell-shocked on both ends. He yeah. was giving up the angles to the freak. Giannis was able to draw fouls on Aiton. They went to Crowder. Crowder had no answers for him. He, he, he was just hell-bent. It was, it was the best finals performance I've ever seen on two ways. You know, I've never seen someone give that much effort on the offensive end and the, e and the defensive end for 48 yeah. minutes. It was incredible. I can hear I, I hear that. And also, 40-plus points with double-digit rebounds in three different games in a six-game series, yeah. ending with 50 and all that. The only thing I'll say is context matters, CP. And um, I'm, I'm not – like, Giannis is the most likable superstar in, in any sport right now, worldwide. He is the yeah. face of the NBA at the moment. He is the reigning finals MVP, richly deserved. And he had an amazing closeout game. It was a game six at home on a team that had no business in the finals. We all know Brooklyn was destroying them without a healthy team, destroying them. And then they had an even less healthy team. And that is the only reason the Bucs weren't swept is because Brooklyn wasn't healthy. Otherwise, they would have been swept and lost, like in a four-game series, they would have won no games and lost by a total of about 100 points in four games. I mean, that's how much better the Nets were. And they were playing a Suns team that would have lost to the Lakers and the Clippers Pretty obviously, had those teams been healthy, they were losing both. So they were losing to the Lakers, and the Clippers went six games without even Kawhi. So context matters when Clyde Frazier, also 37, 19 and seven, uh, or 36, 19 and seven, against Wilt, Jerry West, and Elgin Baylor in a game seven of the finals, right? Uh, 12 for 12 from the free throw line, 12 of 17 from the field, but it's way, way up there. Do you now, like, where do you now rank Giannis among today's greats? Is he the best player in the game? Second, third? Where do you have him? I'll put him third. I'm going to put KD one. Mm -hmm. I'll put LeBron two. And I'll put the Greek freak third. I mean, the, his accomplishments thus far, where he was drafted, a two-time MVP, most improved player, defensive player of the year, and now a finals MVP, and a two-way player. Very important. Two-way yep. player. The guy, the guy was so dominant last night, it was, it was unreal. So I'll put him third for right now, but he, he's right up there with those guys. It, it, you know, I, it, something else occurs to me, CP. We're in an era of the big. Like, quiet is kept. I keep hearing about the point guard. But CP, yeah. Giannis won consecutive uh, – he won back-to-back -back regular season MVPs. He didn't three-peat because – He's a big. Jokic, a big, beat out Embiid, a big for that distinction. And last year, AD, a big, could have easily won MVP. LeBron and KD are the guys you put over Giannis just now. And while they play like perimeter players, LeBron's 260 pounds. KD's almost seven feet tall. Why do you think we are, we're calling this the era of the point guard when the bigs are dominating? Well, I think it, it's because the, the NBA is, is about the flesh. And when you think about that, you, th you think about Steph Curry and, and lighting him up from three and, and James Harden. Mm -hmm. You have Westbrook. You have Kyrie. Uh, you know, the, the, the perimeter players are always going to get that shine. But as yeah. you said, the big man has to get respect. You look at the Greek Freaks performance in this finals. Last year was Anthony Davis. Yeah. This year you had Jokic winning the MVP and Bede was right there. Yeah. As you said, you have LeBron, you have KD, who you could you could consider, you know, front court plays as well. So they they certainly deserve their respect.
They, I mean, it was, it's one thing is while it wasn't the best teams playing in these finals, it was one of the best finals you can think of. Like it was incredibly dramatic. So much on the line for guys like Chris Paul, for guys like Giannis. Um, um, so you could see guys developing. Like you mentioned, Aiton had a bad last game, but was very good throughout most of the playoffs. Uh, Devin Booker, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, like the storylines with Budenholzer and Monty Williams and how many of the games came down to the wire. Chris Paul did come up short. He had a, an awful blunder at the, uh, at the end of game five, fouling Giannis when he had no chance to stop him from scoring. It was a dangerous play, and he gave the Bucks the ball back on the free throw line, down already three points. Like, that sealed the game. Um, and yet, he had a fantastic season, and at times a great postseason at times, he has an opt-out, CP. Do you think he stays in Phoenix? And do, if he does, do they have a shot next year? Or does he go to the Lakers, forego that money, and go to the Lakers ring chase, which Giannis is admonishing players against? But if CP3 is on the Lakers with AD and LeBron, now you don't know who's going to win the chip next year, even if the, if the Nets are healthy, right? What do you do if you're CP3? Well, first off, it was one of my favorite finals because the Nets were eliminated early. And I didn't have to come on the show every week and, and talk to you ad nauseum about them. Mm. So it was fantastic. I, I enjoyed <laughs> it on my lazy boy and took it all in. Mm. Now, for CP3, I don't see him ditching uh, Devin Booker and, and Phoenix after one season and, and going to L.A. Yes, he and LeBron are best friends. But, you know, uh, CP3 chose Phoenix for the opportunity to play with Book. He resurrected that franchise, brought him to their first NBA Finals in, in a long time. And he, listen, he was 19-9 in the playoffs, averaged 50% from the field, 45 from three, 88 from the free throw line, 4-1 to one assist to turnover ratio. I don't think he abandons his team and, and goes ring chasing. He had a huge impact on Booker, Aiton. You had uh, Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson having career seasons with, with CP3 at the helm. I think he stays and, and tries to get back there, but I don't. Th I'm not necessarily sure he gets back there because yeah. they were fortunate to get there. Mm -hmm. Beating an unhealthy Laker team, beating an unhealthy Clipper team. Right. Denver, I thought they would have beaten even with Murray, but they were they were fortunate. They weren't necessarily the best team. They were the most fortunate team and the healthiest team at the time. The only thing is, if you put yourself in CP3 shoes, and they're telling me I have to break CP, but yeah. um, you're CP1 or 4 or something. You're yeah. not CP3. But That's right. You're, you're, you're like, I, I, I'm thinking if I'm Chris Paul and I'm in my mid-30s and I'm looking at the end, I mean, he can still play at a high level, but... There's a super duper team in Brooklyn. I mean, that's just what it is. No one has a shot, including the Lakers, if they're healthy. If Chris Paul goes and it, the biggest impediment may be giving up forty million dollars, right? Like, what can the Lakers afford to pay him? Um, but if Chris Paul goes to L.A. and joins LeBron and A.D. now, if everyone's healthy, we really don't know who wins the finals next year, even with a healthy Brooklyn team. And otherwise, no one's got a shot. So if I'm Chris Paul and I'm looking at a career without a championship, they can say I'm ring chasing, but while I'm still great, you know, this is not Gary Payton joining uh, the, the Heat. Miami, while I'm still yeah. great, I might want to go get that ring, even if Giannis is making fun of dudes like me. I might want to do it, CP. And by the way, we never have to worry about talking about the Knicks this time of year anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> no one got hurt on the Knicks we're, where it made a difference. Right it, none now, of that Max. stuff matters. We're on the road to 2021-2022 mm. season. We're starting mm. with our draft coverage, free agency coming up. Yeah, We're, we're, we're just building right now. Yeah. We're trying to be the next Bucks team and get ready for when the Nets, you know, little run is derailed. We'll be yep. right there and be next up. In I line. agree with you. If you say 30-31, maybe it's possible. The great <laughs> CP, the franchise, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, CP. Always love talking to you. Coming up. Thanks a lot. Radio.